Hey everybody, welcome to another live commentary video. Uh, another odd one in my game collection here. That I'm probably not going to be able to do even an MTO on, let alone a full review. And that's a real shame because this is a really interesting game. It's called Zero Tolerance. It is a first person shooter that is exclusive to the Sega Genesis. Which you don't normally think of when you think of first person shooters. And there's a reason for that, because as far as I know, there were only three released for the entire platform. Now, that's to say nothing of um, the 32X, because there was 32X Doom, for example, but that's an add-on. I'm talking about the actual, straight-up, normal Sega Genesis. This is one of, as far as I'm aware, only three first-person shooters ever made for the platform. And there's a reason for that. The Sega Genesis, and of course the Super Nintendo, were not exactly all that powerful. And first-person shooters tend to require a fair bit of beefy hardware. Now, you can probably already tell, this game is just chugging as far as the frame rate goes. It is probably around 10 frames per second or so. It is not smooth at all and that makes playing the game a bit of a difficult proposition now this being a Genesis exclusive means that you're also limited to a d-pad and three buttons now you could get six button controllers for the Sega Genesis but they wouldn't come out until later on in the system's lifespan and only a few games really supported the six button controllers Mortal Kombat 3, for example, is one of them. And I think some I think Mortal Kombat 2 did as well. I'm not sure about Mortal Kombat 1. But as far as I'm aware, the other two first person shooters on the Genesis also only used the three button controller. And they are about as obscure as this one. This is a game that very few people really remember, and for good reason. Because, I mean, when you think of SNES and Genesis, you don't think of first-person shooters. I mean, the, the Doom port on the SNES is basically witchcraft that's even able to work at all. But even it is a pretty crappy port when you get down to it. Um, this game, on the other hand, was designed for the ground uh, from the ground up for the Genesis. But the Genesis isn't really capable of handling it. You can tell by the frame rate. You can tell by the absolutely atrocious draw distance, which makes seeing enemies extremely difficult, which is a very nasty thing to have in a first-person shooter. But suffice to say, this is an oddity, and that makes it interesting. Just the fact that they were able to even try something like this. And there's actually some really cool features of the game. Like when you shoot enemies and blood splatters on the wall, which is something you didn't even really see in most PC first-person shooters of the year. I mean, you can see it right there. Yeah, I just took some damage from behind, which is irritating. Um, but you can see that it was on the wall, and it was actually dripping down the wall, which was really cool. You didn't see that with most first-person shooters at the time. And... You'll also notice that I get launched all over the place whenever I get hit by any damage, and that gets very irritating. So the number on your right is the health, and the number on your left is the number of enemies remaining on this floor. Basic idea with this game is that you go from floor to floor, and you annihilate every single enemy that you run across. The problem with that is that, like what you just saw there, the enemies basically all know exactly where you are once you walk into a room. They all are faster than you are. They can react faster than you do. Whenever you take damage, you get launched all over the damn place. And more importantly, the amount of damage you take seems to be very random. And while you can take down enemies in basically one hit, at least from what I've been able to experience in this game, that's dependent on you being able to see them and react to them, and you basically can't do that. Not with any degree of um, 
expediency or smoothness or anything slightly resembling a an enjoyable first-person shooter experience. Let's put it that way. This, if you get down to it, is a pretty awful first-person shooter. I mean, there, there you can observe the blood effects. It's actually really cool that the game is able to do that. But unfortunately, it seems to come at the cost of performance. And, well, when the game runs this poorly, it's basically not playable. Which is a real shame. Because, again, this is a very interesting game by nature of it just being weird and unusual and... Well, different, for lack of a better way of describing it. Sometimes games are just interesting by nature of the fact that they are not what you would expect, and even if they aren't good, it's cool that somebody even tried to do something like this. I mean, when you think of a Sega Genesis, you think of things like Sonic, you think of platformers, you think of beat-em-up games, and it was fine for all of that, don't get me wrong, and there's some really good games on the Sega Genesis. But you don't thank first-person shooters for a very good reason. It, it just wasn't a very powerful system, and first-person shooters really do need some beef in the system to be able to basically be playable. I would not classify this really as a playable game, even though I am currently sort of playing it. It's kind of miserable. Now, basically what you do, you go around here, you mow down every enemy, you move to the next floor, you repeat the process over and over and over again. And I mean, sure, it's a first-person shooter on the Genesis, but... I've played a lot of crappy first-person shooters in my time, and I've played some really poorly performing first-person shooters in my time, and I basically can't stand doing that anymore. I mean, if the game has some stuttering issues, that's one thing, but I mean, we're talking about a game that runs at maybe 10 frames a second here all the time, and it's, it's basically impossible to properly react to things. It's... yeah. So if you were thinking about this game, and thinking maybe you should give it a try, I would highly recommend against doing that. It is cool for documentation. It is a very interesting game by nature of what it is. I mean, it's even doing neat effects like that. Sort of trying to do the room over room thing. And funnily enough, the A button is jump. I don't know why, because it only takes place in horizontal. It's basically like playing Wolfenstein. But they put a jump button in the game for some reason. And I mean, it has textured ceilings and... Well, not... Te not textured ceilings. More like textured floors. And... I mean, they've done some cool things with it. It's just... Their reach exceeded their grasp. I think is the way that it is often described. I mean, sometimes the frame rate will do that too, where it'll just suddenly go nuts and go really fast, but you get launched all over the place because the enemies are reacting and shooting you to bits, and it's uh, quite irritating. So, yeah. Chances are I'm probably going to die on this floor. Uh, whenever you die, it goes back to the character selection screen, and you can select another character and continue playing with them. Uh, they they all seem to start with slightly different equipment, but all of them start with handguns. Um, yeah, health is critical. By the way, every single time you pick up something, the game says, whatever that item is, collected. And that does get quite irritating. Also, this is the only song that plays while you're wandering around, as far as I can tell. Just this very repetitive loop, and it is quite tiresome. There's some health. Yay. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah. Now, if you are interested in picking this game up, even despite my recommendations against doing so, you, uh, you can. It's on Steam. It's basically the just the Genesis game packaged with an emulator. It's not an actual port with proper PC controls or anything like that. It does run poorly. 
It, uh, and I'm dead. Yay. So, and, yeah, the, the more enemies are on screen, the worse it runs. But like I said, you can switch between these other characters here. It's... They they all seem to play very similarly, but have slightly different equipment, but that's about it. And it is not exactly what I would describe as an enjoyable experience, so I would highly recommend against you doing so. But if you are somehow still interested in playing it, even if it is only out of historical curiosity, I will have a link in the video description box to the Steam page, and you can pick that version up. It's fairly cheap, if I remember correctly. I think it's around six bucks or something like that. And, uh, you can give it a try. It's, I mean, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> you will not have a good time playing this. But, uh, you might find it interesting, at least. I certainly find it interesting, but it's, it's one of those games where, and, and I'm already dead, that's, yeah, this, this game is kind of brutal, by the way, in case you can't tell. Um, suffice to say, it is a game that is very interesting from a historical standpoint, and that's the, the degree at which I enjoy it. Because that is, that is something that I experience with a lot of these older games, and when I go back and play them, because I didn't play a whole lot of games on console back in the day. I didn't have very many console games, and I didn't have very many consoles. I mean, I had an Atari 2600, and I still have that, actually. And I had a Sega Genesis, and eventually I had an Atari Jaguar, and eventually I'm going to be doing some videos on Atari Jaguar games, all five of them that I have. And one of those is AVP, which is actually a... Uh, surprisingly good game all things considered and it actually to some degree this game actually reminds me of it but I mean going back and just rediscovering some of these console exclusive games from the the early 90s and the late 80s and such I find it interesting and from a historical standpoint but playing the games themselves can be kind of miserable <laughs> I mean going back and playing old JRPGs for example is just miserable so, maybe you'd be able to enjoy this on that level, but I do not recommend this as a first-person shooter, because it is just... It, it's basically not playable. So, I'm going to go ahead and call it a video there. I'm probably going to die here in a moment anyway. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it a video and say... If I ever do somehow finish this game, which is very unlikely in case you can't tell... Yep, yeah, there we go. If I somehow ever finish this game, I might do a review on it. Or an MTO, but I very highly doubt that I will. It is... I don't think I'll ever be able to finish it just because it's, it's so basically unplayable and frankly kind of brutal. But again, I'll have a link in the description box to where you can pick it up if you are interested. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoy these kind of live commentary videos. I do them kind of off the cuff whenever I feel like I have something that would be interesting for a live commentary, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes from here. And I will catch you all in later videos.